time to prepare for an overdose of adorableness. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 10 Ben and Leslie moments on Parks and Recreation. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at scenes that make Ben and Leslie one of TV's best couples ever. Number 10. Anniversary Gifts No gifts. No gifts. Oh, I'm getting him a gift. What's better than a couple's day out consisting of a massage, horse-drawn carriage ride, multiple fun classes, and a whole lot of Jerry? Obviously, Game of Thrones is the only right answer. Determined to outdo Pawnee's master gift giver, Ben plans the perfect celebration for the couple's one-year anniversary, but ends up going with Jerry due to Leslie being preoccupied with work. To commemorate the occasion, Ben surprises Leslie with a weirdly cute scrapbook, packed with all the awesome things they could have done together. Not to be outdone, Leslie brings the Iron Throne to Pawnee. Oh, it's the Iron Throne. Yes, it is. I had a guy at the model store make a replica. He's a bigger Game of Thrones fan than you are. Number 9. Ben's Metaphorical Love for Pawnee Not gonna lie, Pawnee sounds like quite an amazing place. Due to Chris's no-workplace romance policy, Ben and Leslie's potential relationship seemed like a non-starter, but there were subtle hints suggesting that the couple may be willing to break the rules. After half a season of flirting and tension, Ben found the perfect middle ground to express his feelings for Leslie without disobeying Chris. And I look forward to the moments in my day where I, where I get to hang out with the town and talk to the town about stuff. Simultaneously funny and heartwarming, Adam Scott really sold the charming awkwardness of Ben's declaration of interest. If there is one way into Leslie's heart, Pawnee would be it. The town has really nice blonde hair, too, <laughs> and it's read a shocking number of political biographies for a town, which I like. Oh, God. Number 8. Paris. Every relationship comes with its fair share of ups and downs but a couple's longevity is dependent on their reaction to those challenges. If the episode's second chance is anything to go by, Ben and Leslie are destined to last forever. I have gathered you all here today because I have an announcement, a very big announcement about my future. I will be heading to lunch today with my husband at JJ's Diner. With Leslie voted out of office, after inadvertently getting Ben fired from his accounting job, the newlywed spontaneous holiday to Paris arrived during a period of uncertainty. But I did get you one other present to take your mind off all this. Oh, you are the sweetest man in the world. Where is it? Well, it's not here. We have to go get it. After spending most of the episode arguing over Leslie's stubborn decision to run in another district, this trip not only marked a turning point in Ben and Leslie's relationship, but also their individual careers. If you have the ability to go to Paris, by all means, go to Paris. I found one. Oh, great. Mm, right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Number seven, Leslie tells Ben about her pregnancy. Sometimes couples are so inseparable, they manage to finish each other's sentences. Well, Ben and Leslie push this cliche to extremes. While Ben and Ron are getting drunk on wine at a vineyard, Leslie learns that she's eating waffles for two, but every attempt to inform Ben ends up being cut short. I have very big news for you. Oh, well, my teeth are blue. Blueberries what? are alcohol. What? Are you having a stroke? I was just saying around that my dog's Jewish. Oh, phone water. Ben? Proving once again that these two are on the same wavelength, Ben declares his desire to start a family before Leslie can even get a word in. I want to start our family. I mean, I know things are crazy, but th there's no good time, and I want to do it now. Well, buddy, I got some good news for you. The soon-to-be parents celebrate the fantastic news by attending an ultrasound together, where another bombshell is dropped on the couple and the audience. Triplets? And here's a fourth. I'm so sorry. No, it's a little fleck of cream cheese on the screen. Just triplets. Number six, an official declaration of love. Well, there's definitely no objecting to this declaration. After Chris learns about Leslie and Ben's relationship, Pawnee's city manager is left with no choice but to investigate the couple for potential corruption, a line of questioning that leads to Ben quitting to protect Leslie. I thought I was gonna get fired. I should have gotten fired. Why didn't I get fired? Ben asked for a private meeting with the committee, and 
He took full responsibility. Up until this point, Ben and Leslie had to sneak around and hide their relationship. So this announcement came as a huge relief for everyone involved. Let the record state that I, Leslie Nope, love Ben Wyatt. I love him with all of my heart. Did you get that? Considering the couple's feelings are now immortalized in Pawnee's court records, there was no denying that Ben and Leslie's romance is the real deal. Number 5. I Love You and I Like You If there was one exchange that perfectly embodied Leslie and Ben's relationship, this touching moment from the couple's wedding would have to be it. I love you and I like you. I love you and I like you. Putting aside every line uttered by Ron Swanson, I love you and I like you might be Parks and Recreation's most identifiable quote, and serves as a fantastic way to summarize the show's appeal. While the characters are not above getting into a bit of mischief, Parks and Recreation simply radiates warmth and passion, without coming across as unintentionally corny or forced. Here's what I know. I love you and I like you. I love you and I like you. Number 4. Spontaneous Wedding I realized that this whole time I was just wandering around everywhere, just looking for you. I Love You and I Like You was merely the cherry on the sundae. Unable and unwilling to wait another three months to tie the knot, Leslie and Ben opt to spontaneously get married on the same night as an important gala fundraiser. Leslie, let's get married tonight. Sadly, the couple's first attempt to walk down the aisle ends with Ron going to jail, but things ran smoothly the second time around. Surrounded by Parks and Recreation's core cast, Leslie and Ben finally became husband and wife and the moment can only be described as beautiful. There were a lot of signs that Ben and I should get married tonight, but truth be told, we just really wanted to get married. When you're in love, everything seems like a sign. Number three, screw it, they are worth the risk. There is another option. We could just say screw it and do this thing for real. In the immortal words of Leslie Nope, work should never be prioritized over friends or sugary goodness. We need to remember what's important in life. Friends, waffles, and work. Or waffles, friends, work. Doesn't matter. But work is third. After initially butting heads, Leslie and Ben quickly developed feelings for each other. But Ben's position as a state auditor meant that pursuing a relationship would be a conflict of interest. Faced with the prospect of never working together again, Leslie decides that a spot on the city council is worth risking for a future with Ben. I miss you like crazy. I think about you all the time. I want to be with you. So let's just say screw it. Coming from a person whose entire existence revolves around Pawnee, Leslie put pretty much everything on the line. This is how I feel. How do you feel? <sighs> Number two, first kiss. Finally, the romantic tension was starting to become unbearable. Ben and Leslie spent the opening half of season three giving each other googly eyes and dropping not-so-subtle hints that suggested to the audience that a relationship may be in the cards. But then, Parks and Recreation abruptly opted to drop the pretense and jump right into a relationship for these two. Despite all the buildup, the couple's first kiss still managed to feel natural and spontaneous, with Ben taking the initiative and Leslie reciprocating. These two were in sync from the very beginning. Okay. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You want to leave this to chance? Yes, because whatever's next, you and I are in it together. I got you uh, some waffles here, courtesy of JJ's Diner, and chicken soup, courtesy of me. I'll take the waffles, thank you. Okay. Wow. You knew? I figured it out a while ago. Number one, the proposal. What are you doing? Oh my god, what are you doing? I'm thinking about my future. Hilarious and sweet. Characteristics that accurately capture Parks and Recreation's charm. For better or worse, every proposal is unforgettable. But Ben pops the question in a nondescript room with nobody to bear witness, as Leslie is the only person that matters, and anything else would just be superfluous. I am deeply, ridiculously in love with you. And above everything else, I just... I, I want to be with you forever. Amy Poehler's reaction is simultaneously amusing and endearing. But the proposal is such an amazing scene because it exemplifies the sitcom's earnest tone. I need to remember 
every little thing about how perfect my life is right now at this exact moment. While Leslie's unrelenting passion makes Pawnee seem like Washington, Parks and Recreation truly shines during these more human moments. Leslie Nope. Will you? Yes. Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.